If you ask a bass angler what their favorite soft plastic rigging style is, you're going to get probably as many answers as anglers that you ask. However, if you ask that same bunch what their choice is for fishing heavy cover for big fish, answer is probably going to be the Texas rig. What you have here is your choice of soft plastic rigged to an offset worm hook with a bullet sinker attached to a monofilament or fluorocarbon leader attached to your main line. This iconic rigging style perfected in the professional bass game has been used everywhere from punching lily pads in hydrilla in Okeechobee to fishing sunken timber like you see behind me to boulder fields and stump beds. And how we accomplish that is where we put the weight. As opposed to the Carolina rig that keeps that weight further forward and allows a more subtle action, this nose centric weight distribution allows your soft plastic to punch down to the bottom quicker as well as slip over the top of pieces of hard structure. While there are as many different soft plastics out there to match the hatch, today we are using a fast vibe or U-tail style worm. This is our Lakeside Texas Rig Rigging Tutorial. And to start off, we have our main line. This is spider wire 50 pound braid. This is gonna give me all the sensitivity that I need to detect subtle knocks, as well as some strength when I'm fishing it around heavy cover that you'll see in this video. I decided to skip the tying process for the uni to uni knot that I am using here. I prefer not to use accessory tackle when I can. You are more than welcome to rig a barrel swivel on there. I find it just a little faster to skip that and do a uni to uni connection between my main line and my leader. My leader in this case is 20 pound fluorocarbon. It's going to give me a point in which this rig breaks if I ever do get it stuck on something. And uh, it does happen now and again. So after we have our main line to leader connection here, we are going to go over the different parts of this rig, which is comprised of a bullet sinker, a hook, and your choice of soft plastic. Unlike the Carolina rig, you are gonna put your bullet sinker directly in front of your hook. 3 16 Eagle Claw lead bullet sinker. A, another option would be tungsten, especially in a non-toxic state. Those will be a little bit smaller and a little bit harder, which is great for slimming down your rig while punching mats or heavy cover. You're gonna slip that onto your leader line. You don't need a bead, unlike the Carolina rig, which is gonna add more noise. And then, I like to use a standard offset shank worm hook. There are a couple of different options. Of course, you could always go with an extra wide gap worm hook. I am choosing the Gamagatsu offset shank worm hook in the two aught size. You can go a little bit bigger depending on your soft plastic. I like the RB model because these are a little bit heavier gauge wire compared to the standard offset. Not a ton, but you do see there's a little bit difference in thickness. And when you're fishing heavy cover, weed beds and whatnot, you really set that hook. You want as much rigidity in your hook as possible. And we are going to use, in this case, standard fisherman's knot. It's one of my go-tos. You want your leader line? I like to go about a foot to a foot and a half. It doesn't have to be crazy long because this isn't going to be sliding the same way. Now that you have your hook and sinker, you're going to want to select your soft plastic. Depending on where you're fishing and how you're fishing, you could use something like a hollow body tube, your classic curly tail worm, or a creature bait like a lizard. For this rigging video, I am going to be using a fast vibe or U-tail style worm. This is the six inch culprit in watermelon. So we are going to do your classic weedless nose hook with the first quarter inch. Slide it around, more or less mark where that hook is going to protrude, bend back and sink it. That's going to be a relatively weedless 
presentation. When rigging your soft plastic, pay attention to where the end of the hook is positioned. Ideally, this should be laying just on top of the spine or top side of your soft plastic. This will reduce the amount of weed or debris that gets hung up on the point while still allowing for a firm hook set. And as opposed to the ribbon tail worms or any of the other ones that can be moved really slowly, this is kind of a mid-water bait. So we're going to be retrieving it up in the water column. With a Texas rig, you can fish this nearly anywhere, but it does excel in areas with heavy cover. The weedless rigging of that soft plastic, the position of the weight just allows it to glide over the top of stumps and rock edges and weed beds. It punches very well through mats and grass. Uh, hydrilla is a phenomenal place to use this as is duckweed, lily pads, just about anywhere. Now, what we moved over to right here is kind of just a little protrusion of this lake, but it is very deep. I'm not sure how well you can see that color contrast, but it's probably six to eight feet within six feet of the shoreline. This is a nice little quiet, cold pocket that these bass can stage in. You can also see I've got a lot of timber that's fallen down back here, which can be pretty difficult to get into for most of your rigs. However, with the close to snag proof rig style of the Texas rig, this is about the perfect spot for it. You may notice with my casting that I'm doing quick wrist snaps for lack of a better term. With the single hook, the nose mounted weight and the overall aerodynamic nature of this rig, you don't have to lob this the same way that you would with a Carolina rig or lasso it the way that you would with an Alabama rig because you have that weight positioned very close to the bait, you can put it all in the wrist. You can do snap casts. You can also flip and pitch this rig, which I will show you as well. Just let her rip. While there may be some times where you can cast when you're going for distance and trying to cover a large area while you're fishing, there might be other times, especially when fishing pockets like this, either on a boat or shore-based, where you don't need to wind up and cast a long distance. You simply want to present the bait directly in front of the fish. To do that, you're going to want to flip and pitch. Those are slightly different methods, but at the end of the day, they work the same way. Both are designed to put a heavier bottom type bait directly in front of fish in heavy cover. Rather than winding up and casting, you're going to take that in your hand, swing the rod tip out while letting go of the bait, and quite honestly, lobbing it to where you want to go. And you are going to let that Texas rig get all the way to the bottom. It won't take long because of the hydrodynamic shape of that bullet sinker. You can always err on the side of heavier because you want it to punch through cover. You want it to get past your lily pads, past your weed beds. If you fish in the south and you have hydrilla or duckweed, both are excellent bass habitat and very difficult to work through. This is a rig, especially based on the cover that you're fishing in, that you are going to want to maintain a steady pressure on that line. A major subset of how the lure works is based on movement and position. After you cast, the rod should be pointed parallel to the water and straight out. From there, lift the rod up to about 45 to 50 degrees in a steady sweeping motion while reeling. After a couple of cranks, bring the rod tip back down. 
This will give just enough slack line for your Texas rig to fall naturally. Be careful not to raise your rod tip too high, as not only will this most likely pull your Texas rig out of the strike zone, but will also make setting the hook much more difficult. What I'm currently doing is taking a couple of cranks and then I'm bouncing this rig up and off the bottom. That's going to make a little bit of commotion as that weight hits the bottom over and over and over again, and also give fish some time to key in on it. I get through those weeds, and this is just a constant retrieve. Having it bounce near the bottom I do want to demonstrate how you're going to set that hook. Because it is a single point hook, the weight is close to that hook point, and because you're fishing in heavy cover, usually with heavy line and heavy gear, you can do a drop and pop. You can pull in all that slack when you feel that take and put some pressure back on it. What that's going to do as you take in that slack is guarantee that your entire arc for your hook set goes into driving that hook into the jaw of the fish and pulling it out of cover. Odds are, if a bass hits, especially in places where there's a lot of cover, they're going to grab it and immediately turn back into that hole. You're going to pull their head back in the way you want them to swim when you put all that force behind it. It's important to make sure that the rod that you have is a heavier action because you don't want the entire rod to bend when you hook like that. You want the backbone of the rod to do a lot of that work, both in absorbing the shock and in helping you steer that fish away from cover. They are gonna nose down and try to drive back into the places that they feel safe. Much like at Thanksgiving, when you grab that last piece of pumpkin pie, you are going to run and hide and eat it in silence, rather than your aunts and uncles and cousins and everyone else trying to see if they can snag that last little bit from you. <laughs> 